The RSPCA have almost 300 inspectors working across the country. Every year they investigate more than 150,000 complaints of cruelty and neglect. And every day they put themselves in potential danger to protect the dogs they rescue. For them, it's more than a job, it's a way of life. Inspector Kate Fletcher is one of a team of 43 inspectors based in Greater London. I think it says I've Are these your dogs, <coughs> They're not, right? Kate's been an inspector for just over three years. Her favourite breed are shepherds, and she often fosters dogs herself. She's worked at Battersea Dogs and Cats Home and volunteered in animal welfare in America. We've had a call about a dog that um, is being kept in a flat, um, very skinny apparently, and has very long claws. I have been there once, and I've left him a note asking him to contact me, and the owner hasn't. So we'll go and hope that he's in there today and that we can see the dog properly this time. With the neglected dog being a shepherd, it's a case that's tugging on Kate's heartstrings. I've got terrible weakness for shepherds, and I just love them as a breed. Kate has a rescue shepherd herself called Buddy. Sounds really corny, but he, he is like my best friend. German Shepherds just give their total heart to oh. you, and I just think they're gorgeous too. You need him, he's so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something about a call about Shepherds that just makes it that bit more personal because I've got such a weakness for them. German Shepherds are my breed, and, and I love them. The Shepherds owner has consistently ignored Kate's messages. So, will she finally get to see the dog today? As the door is opened, a shepherd dog runs out of the flat. And Kate can see it's shockingly thin. What's her name? Bella. OK, she is really extremely thin. Is it all right to come in? Yeah? The owner didn't want to be filmed, so our cameras had to wait outside. He's claiming that Bella is well fed and properly looked after, but Kate can't ignore the evidence of her own eyes. She doesn't look a healthy dog at the moment. She's very, very skinny. Poor Bella is a bag of bones, and Kate knows she needs to get her out of there. I need to take her to the vet now, and then what will happen is she'll have to stay in our care while we find out what's going on and while I'm back and interview you. Because I suspect an offence might have been committed, I've also got to caution you. After being issued with a caution, the owner reluctantly allows her to take Bella away. And as Bella's brought out into the daylight, Kate can see just what an awful state she's in. A very skinny dog. <laughs> a healthy shepherd shouldn't look like this. Shepherd dogs originated in Germany in the 1880s. Bella's actually a Belgian shepherd, which are medium to large sized and closely related to the Dutch and German shepherd breeds. Intelligent and easily trainable, Belgians were originally used as herding dogs. Yeah, I'm going to take that dog to the vet straight away. I think the guy is quite angry, but luckily let me take it um, and straight away I'm going to call the police and get it seized as well and get it seen by a vet because that dog is emaciated. <laughs> yeah, really bad. The RSPCA investigate over 10,000 cases of neglect every month, making it one of their most common call-outs. Bella is in a terrible condition and Kate finds it difficult to understand how she got into such a state. It really does shock me that somebody can be living with a dog that looks like that and not think that there is anything wrong, not think that, oh yeah, you know, maybe I should take this dog to a vet, when it looks horrendous and the poor dog you know, is, is dying effectively, it's starving to death. Despite years as an inspector, seeing an animal mistreated like this still appalls her. I'm always in shock after seeing something like that. It's unforgivable. With Bella's life hanging in the balance, has Kate rescued her in time? How can you live with that and, and think that that is acceptable? It just completely, just the mind boggles. Just, and she's just such a lovely dog as well. It just absolutely breaks your heart. Seeing a dog like this, it does make you really, really mad. But all I've got to think is I've got her out there. Kate's brought Bella to be examined by vet Duncan Davidson who can instantly see that this is as bad as it gets. We have a body condition scoring system that we use in dogs where one is emaciated, five is morbidly obese. She's about as thin as she could be without getting to the point of collapse. 
So I think in, in her case, her body condition score is going to be one for emaciated. Emaciation means being abnormally thin or weak, especially because of illness or lack of food. Bella is literally wasting away. She has got no subcutaneous body fat at all. There's clearly wastage of muscles because you can see the outline of all the, the bones, the, the backbone, you can see the outline of the pelvis. You know, I can feel pretty much I can get my fingers to touch one another across the abdomen. That's how thin she is. It's just quite remarkable. There's no sign of anything in the intestines at all, nothing in the, the rectum. So uh, I don't think she's been fed for some days. A healthy Belgian shepherd should weigh around 25 kilos, but just how far below that will Bella be? 16.8 kilograms. She's at least 10 kilograms underweight. Bella is nearly 40% under the standard weight for a dog of her age and size. That's uh, tremendously underweight. Bella's so thin that her body won't be able to digest large meals. She may be able to be saved, but her diet will have to be carefully managed and monitored over the next few weeks. She has to be fed lightly for the next few days with a good quality dog food and in the hope that her weight begins to increase. And I would imagine it's going to take at least a month for her weight to get back to normal. No time like the present, a starving Bella's diet can begin. Right, now, you ready for this, Bella? That uh, is a hungry dog. Remarkably, despite the ordeal she's suffered, Bella's character is shining through, and she's certainly won over Kate. Oh, you like, oh, you like, you like Auntie Kate, don't you? You like Auntie Kate? Yeah, well, yeah she's come to rescue you. Well, would you like to take me home, Auntie Kate? <laughs> don't tempt me. With the arrival of the police and the appalling condition of Bella clear to all, Duncan requests the seizure of the dog under the Animal Welfare Act. As you will observe, this dog is in rather less than perfect condition. What I'm requesting you do is to uh, carry out a, a seizure of the dog, which will then allow the dog to be taken into the care of the RSPCA. With the police in agreement, Kate is now free to take Bella to the boarding kennels where she will get the care and attention she deserves. She was such a good girl. She's been amazing. Um, she's got such a lovely nature. I'm just glad we got her out of there and we can get her looked after. And I look forward to seeing her in a few weeks when hopefully she's looking much healthier. OK, let's get you to nice warm kennels, all right? Bella's owner later signed her over to the custody of the RSPCA and an investigation has begun. But for now, Bella can just think about getting back to full health. In the UK, it's estimated that we have to deal with a bum-clenching thousand tonnes of dog poo a day. Since the introduction of the Dog Fouling of Land Act in 1996, our streets have been much cleaner. Thank goodness, as dog poo contains all kinds of nasties harmful to us and our four-legged friends. But even at home, owners are neglecting their dog's health if they don't get out that pooper scooper. In many cases of poor living conditions, inspectors have to make repeat visits to make sure the message hits home something only too familiar to Inspector Jason Bowles. It's a hellhole, isn't it? A hellhole for dogs. Jason has been with the RSPCA for 12 years. He estimates that in that time, he saved over a 1,000 dogs and has two rescued Jack Russells himself. I've been on a number of occasions, never ever caught the person who owns it in um, and left lots of uh, what we call improvement notices. And to varying degrees, it's been cleared up but then it's gone back to the same situation again and again where the yard is full of faeces. Improvement notices detail how an owner is failing to provide for the animal's welfare and what steps need to be taken. Wherever possible, the RSPCA want to work with owners to improve conditions. But because Jason hasn't been able to contact this owner, his only option may be to take the dog. If it's in the same situation I've seen before, I'll be looking to get uh, veterinary certification to get it removed. It's just a pitiful existence for a dog. So it's the owner's last chance, and if Jason doesn't meet him today, he may have to get the police involved. Surprise, surprise, nobody's home. Looks like no one's in, just gonna have a look over the wall. 
Being an inspector means adapting to some unusual situations. I need to look over this wall, so a bit unconventional, but needs must. I've got to stand on this. But it will take more than a wall to stop Jason. With a little help from his cage, Jason can get a good look at the backyard. And there's the dog. Tucked away behind the bins in a makeshift kennel is Tyson, a four-year-old husky, a normally lively and very active breed. Huskies were originally bred to survive in Arctic areas and can pull a grown man on a sled up to 18 miles an hour. Their medium-length double coat allows them to withstand temperatures up to minus 76. As working dogs, they're very energetic and athletic, but lethargy is a key sign of illness. The dog's causing me a bit of concern this time because normally it's up and about wondering why you're looking over the wall. This time it just seems to be lying there. Maybe his yard has something to do with it. What's here is loads and loads and loads of faeces. Good couple of weeks worth, I'd say. The conditions are worse than they ever have been, really, as far as the faeces are concerned. So what I'm going to do now is get in contact with the vet and see if I can get them out to have a look at the conditions. If the vet confirms that Tyson's health is at risk, then Jason can call the police to enter the property. Local vet Sean Taylor arrives and gets a look in Tyson's yard. Hi. In here. Yeah, the dog's in there, yeah. But with this amount of poo... There's just a one dog? Yeah. He's surprised Tyson's the only dog in there. Although the conditions are bad, Sean needs to do a proper examination to establish if Tyson's health has been affected. Mm. Like I say, there is quite a lot of feces mm. in there. It's unhygienic enough, is that? So is it at risk if it stays in there? Yeah, I would have said, on that basis, serving with an improvement notice. The fact that he's ignored that, really, where yeah, the dog potentially is going to suffer if it continues. Yeah. So I uh, think you've got an offence sitting in there on the basis that he hasn't confirmed to that, that warning notice. So I'll get you to fill out the certificate and then yep. uh, get the police over. Yep, no worries. OK. So Sean is happy to sign what's known as an 18-5 certificate, meaning an animal can be taken into custody if it's likely to suffer if its circumstances don't change. But with the owner absent, Jason has to call the police to gain access to Tyson. We'll examine it and then uh, try and trace the owner. It could turn up any time. And sure enough, before the police arrive, guess who turns up? Tyson's owner. The dog in the backyard here is just in horrible conditions. What it is, is Lytton has broke his leg at the moment mm. and he's at my mum's house. So I've got to stay there and look after him. The owner is in a tight spot and knows it. Working alongside the inspectors, there's a dedicated team of experts that get dogs just like this one, Alfie, ready to find new homes. Whether it's training, rehabilitation, or just a bit of TLC, they're there to make the dog's lives better. Today we're at Millbrook Animal Centre, where animal care assistant Katie McNeil is working with Minnie, a one-year-old Leonberger cross. Minnie came to the centre two months ago when owner Alicia called in the RSPCA in desperation at her behaviour. Different looking, isn't it? So it's a crossbreed between sort of a... Yeah. Hello, darling. Minnie was completely out of control and her size and strength made her a danger to Alicia's three children. But she hadn't the time or space to train Minnie properly to live in the home environment. It's a problem the RSPCA sees all too often. Here at Millbrook Animal Centre, Thanks to the donation of one volunteer, they're able to offer a unique solution for their doggy guests not used to domestic life. The Bouncer's Retreat, a home simulator that teaches dogs how to behave in a real home. So this is our Bouncer's Retreat where we bring Minnie down to give her some time out of the kennel. This retreat for us is fundamental for their welfare. But as soon as she gets in there, Minnie starts misbehaving. She's straight up onto the sofa and play fighting with assistant Becky. Right, Minnie, Minnie off, come on. Oh dear, still some way to go then, Minnie. Minnie needs to get used to all the constantly changing sights and sounds of the family home, and the bouncer's retreat is here to help. So things are about to get noisy. Oh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stick the hoover on, do a bit of hoovering, just so Minnie gets used to the sound and the movement. If she starts worrying a bit, I'm just going to ignore her and carry on, because in the home environment, that's what happens. Obviously, if she starts chasing the hoover or trying to bite the hoover, I will stop then. But otherwise, I'll just ignore her and I'll carry on with what I'm doing. 
Different things bother different dogs. Some could walk into a house and not give a vacuum a second thought. You're looking at me, don't you, for reassurance. Minnie seems to be distinctly on edge. It's scary. Time to hide. But as Katie continues, Minnie seems to be gradually getting used to the vacuum. And eventually, she relaxes. She's a little bit worried to begin with. Obviously, it makes sure that we don't go and hoover right at her, because obviously if I come with her at the, the end of the hoover, it's going to be quite scary for her. She, you know, she sort of when you give Becky a kiss. So, you know, I think she was fine. Well, it looks like Minnie's new home can have clean carpets. But what about the other big source of domestic noise? Pop the TV on. It's a tough life. At least Minnie and her family can get some time with their favourite show. Not everyone wants to be pestered by their dog the whole evening if they're sitting and watching a film. It's really important they learn to go and settle themselves. A well-socialised dog would get the message and settle down almost immediately. But Minnie isn't quite ready yet. And after another five minutes of pacing and attention-seeking, Minnie finds something to distract herself. You know, she did lay down and I know, even though she was chewing the toy, it's better for her to be chewing her toy than be chewing the furniture or always wanting attention from people. A happy home makes a happy dog. Minnie's behaviour is now a million miles away from when she was rescued two months ago. Hopefully soon, these unique training techniques will help her to be rehomed. So while she's here, we, we will continue to do daily work with Minnie. We do training every day with her, teaching her how to behave in a home. Once she's in a home and she's settled, I think she's going to be lovely. I think Minnie's going to make a wonderful pet. The average female dog could give birth to a litter of five puppies, and they're able to give birth twice a year, so not getting your dogs new to could mean that your home could be overrun with more dogs than you could cope with. Inspector Kirsty Withnell was called to a case where this happened on a huge scale. It started with a call about stray dogs. I had a call from somebody who'd gone up a bridleway next to a property and they'd just seen a couple of dogs under a hedge and they heard other dogs so were concerned there was a large number there. I thought that sounded quite odd so we went to go and have a look. The first thing they saw as they went up the drive was a dog with her puppies surrounded by abandoned cars and rubbish. But the worst deprivation was yet to come <laughs> as Kirsty got a look around the back of the house. The dogs had fleas, but were generally well fed. But it was the sheer number of them that appalled Kirsty and her team. There was just dogs everywhere, and it was impossible to count the number. Um, it became apparent they were as a pack. They had just bred totally out of control. They were going and attacking the farmer's sheep, so two ended up shot dead. They were just sort of living on their own and doing whatever they wanted. Some of them were totally wild. Unbelievably, someone was actually living in the house. The owner agreed to let Kirsty and her colleagues inside, and what they found was truly shocking. The house was absolutely disgusting. None of the rooms were obvious what they were because of all the excrement up the walls and on the floor. It was quite an unbelievable sight. I remember walking into what I presume is the lounge, and I stepped up on top of the dog muck. It was just unbelievable. It was so thick. It was just spongy and soaking wet. The floor is um, inches deep in faeces. Smells strongly of urine. When asked, the owner thought she had around 30 dogs. Kirsty and her team eventually counted 60 at the home, showing just how out of control the situation had become. The owner had allowed these feral dogs to overrun her life and simply couldn't cope anymore. I don't think she meant to mistreat her dogs, but she had by not looking after them properly and having too many. 60 is a ridiculous number to have. The owner was given a suspended sentence and banned from keeping all animals. All 60 dogs were taken into kennels and the long process of retraining and rehoming could begin. It was extremely rewarding to see some of the dogs at the end come through and get rehomed and be sort of friendly, happy dogs. And over in Cambridgeshire, that's what happened. Just a few months after they were rescued, two of the pack were adopted and renamed Honey and Rebel 
by their new owner, Anne Keenan. Rebel's quite timid. Um, he's getting a lot better. He was very, very retiring. Um, the first few times I took him out around the village, he was quite sort of um, wary of people. Honey's a bit more outgoing and a bit more friendly with people. It's been a journey of discovery for Honey and Rebel. They've had to learn things many dogs and owners take for granted. They didn't really understand walks. And the first time we took them down the lane, they got stuck in the undergrowth and we had to go and fetch them out, which was hysterical because they just stood there paralysed with sort of, oh God, what's this? It's like it's grass. We'll get used to it. But patience and perseverance on Anne's part has paid off. I just treated them the way I treated any dog. I kept them on the lead when we went out for a couple of days until they knew where they were. And then we just went, OK, let them off and let's see what happens. Honey always came back really quickly. Uh, Rebel, hence the Rebel, tended to wander off and not come back as quickly and sometimes would sort of disappear for 10 minutes. Um, I suppose if I'd known they were feral, I might have been a bit more careful. <laughs> Thanks to the efforts of dog rescuers like Kirsty and Anne, both Honey and Rebel's lives have been transformed. From running wild to running free, it's great to see these dogs finally finding their place in a family. The day-to-day -day life of an inspector throws up all sorts of challenges, and not all of them with four legs. An inspector is part dog rescuer and sometimes part social worker, as dealing with dogs often means juggling with owner's problems too. Nothing new to Inspector Anthony Pulfer. I'm sure there's many choke chains on the market, but I don't think I'd want that in my neck if I pulled on a lead. So I'm taking that away. I don't want that to ever be on an animal again. Anthony's been an inspector for 12 years. It was his first job out of school. He has one dog, Maddie, a rescue that he originally fostered, and his favourite breed is the English Bulldog. Anthony's on his way to visit an elderly dog owner. I've been to his address previously. Um, and spoke to the gentleman, but it sounds like things might have deteriorated slightly in respect to the dog. I know it's a Jack Russell type dog um, called Theo. I think it's quite a good age. But as he turns into the road, finding Theo is going to be easier than he thought. That is the dog. I don't know why it's on its own and loose at the moment, so we're going to see what's going on. Theo's a nine year old Jack Russell and seems to be wandering aimlessly around on his own, no owner in sight. That's a bit strange. He's got a lead attached to him and loose. Hello, darling. What's this? What's this? Good lad. Obviously, recently you've been for a walk and something's gone wrong. Poor, poor dog. On examining Theo, Anthony can see that, although he appears healthy, his coat is in a sorry state. That fur is um, greasy, it's matted. Typical kind of like old dog. The body weight is good. I always knew this gentleman fed and watered his dog, but things, this, this can't be happening. There's plenty of life in this old dog, but Anthony's priority is now to find out what happened to the owner, so he decides to keep Theo safe in his van. I say it's not a warm day, low temperature, so he'll be right in the vehicle for a little bit while we make inquiries at the address. Jack Russells were first bred by the Reverend John Russell in the late 19th century. They are descendants of the now extinct English White Terrier. Theo is a rough-coated Jack Russell with a longer, coarse coat that needs regular brushing. That dog just needs a bit of a clip up and a good brush and that would be back to a nice elderly dog and good body weight, you know. Let's go and see if we can find your owner. Once again, Anthony's search doesn't take long. There's the owner there. Hello, Mr Archer. Let's have a quick chat about the dog. Is that all right? Yeah. Mainly his coat and things. It seems that owner Mr Archer just let Theo out for a tinkle and the cheeky chap went for a bit of a wander. That's all right. Yeah, that's straight in. Thank you. As an elderly person living alone, Mr Archer hasn't been able to take Theo for a trim, so Anthony wants to help him out. We can help try and get him clipped up. If you're happy for me to just quickly whip him up to the vet... Wait, now? Yeah, get him tidied up a bit and then bring him back. Mr Archer agrees to let Anthony take Theo to the vets, which can be paid for by a special welfare fund to help dogs and owners in difficult circumstances. I'll see, I'll see you within the hour. So Anthony's got the permission he needs, and it's off for a trim. The dog in the backyard here is just in horrible conditions and right. I've put left enough notices around to clean yeah. it up. No, I do, I do clean it up uh, every other day. Well, not every other day, it's about once a week I clean it up, to be honest with you. He's struggling to give Jason a good explanation as to how things have got so bad. I do come every day, I feed him, I sit down with him. Yeah. Take him out. But you don't clean up the yard? 
So there's no excuse to keep a dog in its own feces in the backyard and leaving on its own for the majority of the time. Mm. Might as well rehome it. Are you willing to rehome it? Well, I'd like to keep it to be honest with you. Mm. You know, I've given you the chances. The police aren't here yet. I can't stop you if you're going to remove it, but you're going to need to take it somewhere that's, that's better than it is here right now. Jason is powerless to insist that the vet examines Tyson, and with the owner removing the dog, all seems lost. He's obviously not happy about us removing the dog. Um, I can't stop him removing the dog if he's going to do it now, before the police get here. But then Jason's luck changes. Just as the owner leaves, the police turn up. And although they can't seize Tyson because he's been removed from the living conditions, they can insist on a veterinary examination. Just need to have the, the vet have a quick look at the dogs, make sure it's OK yeah. to start off with. Yeah. Hello, mate. Finally, Sean can examine Tyson to see if there are any health reasons to seize him. Uh, to four. And although Tyson doesn't make it easy for him... You're all right, mate. You're all right. Sean is soon satisfied that he's healthy. He's OK, healthy enough. OK, yeah. all right. No problem, you can take, take the dog to somewhere else, but right. don't bring it back to that yeah. property. So the owner is free to leave with his dog, but not before Jason gives him a written warning to improve Tyson's living conditions. There's been offences committed, so, but you're removing it from the situation right now, yeah. so I don't have to take the dog, right. OK, because the dog's healthy. Yeah. But if it goes back in that position again, the vet's already certified that it needs removing from there. We'll just come and take it. It's very close, that, very close. All right. The owner's turned up, obviously not very happy about the fact we're taking the dog. But it's taken this amount of action, really, to get any reaction from him, because I've been here quite a few times, and other officers have too. Hopefully, this guy's seen the error of his ways and he's going to be uh, uh, keeping a better way, or um, I'm going to be asking him to sign it over. Jason's perseverance means the owner must clean up Tyson's yard or face having him seized. And he'll be keeping an eye on Tyson's living conditions over the next few weeks. So, I mean, you can see we've only driven about five minutes from the gentleman's house, from, the, from his house to the vet's. And, you know, what, what may cost 20, 30 pounds is, in my eyes, would be money well spent. Theo's owner may be elderly and live alone, but he cares well for his best friend. Anthony's taken a keen interest in these old mates, and doesn't want them to be separated. But if Theo's condition worsens, he might be forced to intervene. That owner, you know, sort of loves that dog, and they obviously bounce off each other. You, I, from previously, where that, that heater was, um, these two were sitting in front of that fire, bless them, just trying to, well, just, just loving each other's company. And uh, I wouldn't want to break that. Theo has been taken to Anderson Veterinary Surgery, where he'll be given the trim he so desperately needs. Good lad although he doesn't seem too keen. This is Theo, about eight, nine years of age. Hello, darling. All right, darling. Hello, Pop. Let's have a look. Oh, OK. You're getting very stressed. Yeah. Small dogs like Theo tend to overcompensate and will bark and snap a lot in unfamiliar situations, and Theo's obviously finding being away from his owner a bit stressful. So before anything else can happen, it's muzzle on. Being an elderly dog and being, you know, away from his owner and stressed, that, oh, um, that, that it's completely unnatural. So just to sort of save our fingers, we're going to see if we can try and calm him down with the muzzle and see if we can Boy. get some of these mats off. Boy. Come on then. Come on. I know. I know. Good, Good dog. Boy. As the greasy, filthy fur is clipped away, the real Theo begins to emerge. Uh, amazing what a haircut can do on a dog in, in such a short space of time. But it's not just cosmetic. Grooming is a vital part of a dog's healthcare regime. You could harbour a lot of parasites under that fur, and it's the start of where our skin conditions come, you know, and okay. before we know it, the, you know, the dog's got open sores and wounds and itching itself. I'm very surprised that the, underneath the dog, it actually seems to be parasite-free and quite a decent skin under there. Good boy. Oh, well done, He's Theo. actually doing very well. Messy bum, is he? Oh, hold still, Theo. Don't want any accidents at this end. All right, darling. <laughs> All right. The panting, along with the short temper, indicate just how stressed Theo is. So the vet decides he's had enough. Relax, boy. 
We're done. There right. we go. Good dog. There you go. Good dog. But with the muzzle off, he soon begins to calm down. I think I've just taken three years off his age. This is definitely worth doing. What we've done in 20 minutes, it'll probably take that gentleman more than a few days to try and succeed that. And this is why we have the RSPCA sort of welfare fund sometimes to help people that are, are unable to help themselves sometimes. Thanks for your time. See you later. Hey, he's got a bit of skip in his jump now, look. He wasn't running going in there. <laughs> time to go home, but not before Theo gets a free gift. I mean, it just shows you how sweet these vets are. They've actually given us a brush. But at least we can go back and say, this is what you've got to do. And I think this man will generally have this dog sit on his lap of an evening. He probably will put a brush through it. I'm pleased. I think let's go back to the owner now. Oh, he's got a lot more energy already. I think he knows where he is. What do we think? He's a fish mouth, don't you, mate? Hey? Should we pop him in then and say hello? Back inside, Anthony gives owner Peter a quick demonstration. What I think he'll do quite well with this gentle brushing, yeah? Every, every morning and every night. Okay, and I think he'll enjoy it. But as a brush, so you think, yeah, just like that. It's all the bits, you know, it's, it's, it's around the head, around the legs, really, but he'll let you do it more than me. My old mate. Yeah, bless. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be out of your way. If you could just try and keep on his coat and, and I'll try and pop him when I can in the future and see how you're getting on. Anton has been glad to help and doing so has meant these two old friends can stay together for years to come. It's, it's all about judging the person that's in front of you, what you think their capabilities are as a person to that animal. And of course I believe he's capable to feed that animal, to water that animal, to walk that animal. So I'm, I'm chuffed, I think that's a good result. Astonishingly, over 300 abandoned dogs are found every day in the UK. Without any consideration for their welfare, they're dumped like rubbish. Last year, Inspector Chris Shaw was called to a park in Derby where a Staffordshire Bull Terrier had been tied to a park bench and abandoned. Some callous people out there will actually do this, just go and tie it up and just chuck it away. It was one of the hottest days of the year, so speed was of the essence. When I could speak to the caller earlier, I could hear a dog going mad in the background. Luckily, the dog was noticed by passerby Jonathan Marvel. I was just walking the dog, and as I got down, he noticed something. I looked down, and there's a dog. Did he want a drink and things? Yeah, he's drunk. Alone. Yeah. Well, we've got you now, mate. We'll look after you. As Ace wasn't microchipped, Chris was unable to trace the owner so he remained at the boarding kennels and was put up for rehoming. After seven months, Ace was finally adopted. And today, Chris is going to visit him to do the final assessment on his new home and owners. These kind of jobs are usually left to uh, the volunteers, but Ace, he did, uh, he did catch my heartstrings and uh, he is a, a, a fantastic little dog. It'll be interesting to see if Ace remembers me because it's been a little while now since I've seen him. So let's see, let's see how he reacts. Ace made such a lasting impression on Chris that he's been looking forward to this moment for quite some time. But will Ace recognise him? Can't wait for this. Hi there, you all right? Hi, my name's yeah, Chris. Right. Right. Ace's rescuers are Adam and Harriet from Derby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, it's coming to see you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, can't wait. And from the sound of it... Oh, mate. Oh, me, mate. Chris needn't have worried, as Ace is definitely glad to see an old friend. He's looking really good. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Chris's involvement with the dogs he rescues usually ends after they go to boarding kennels. So today is a first. See, I never get to see this side of things. This is amazing, this is, you know. Me poor? Good boy. Good boy. You do both, do you? Oh. For me, he is a stunning little staffy, like yeah, just really beautiful gorgeous. colour, Absolutely you know, gorgeous. great temperament. If I hadn't got all the dogs, he would have been coming home with me. Chris may have missed out, but Ace has definitely landed on his paws with this new home. Adam and Harriet passed the assessment with flying colours. Well, your garden's perfect, your house is perfect, yeah, so is. everything's absolutely so. And I can yeah. see, you know, he's obviously already really bonded with you. You're doing amazing yeah, yeah, with his training. For him to come in and yeah. have no problems and just settle yeah. like that. 
It's, it's great. He really could not have asked for a better dog at all. After a rough start in life, it's clear that Ace is now in good hands and Chris is happy that Ace's owners will give him everything he needs. Oh, well, I'm just, I'm so proud of you guys, I really am. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so grateful as well, like, you know, without you, we wouldn't be able to have got him a home, so yeah. thank you very much for taking Ace on. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you thank too. you very much. Thank All you. right, see you. Take care. That was absolutely brilliant to go and see Ace in his new home, all settled and doing really, really well. And I'm just so chuffed that he's happy and he's, he's you know, he's obviously really enjoying being in that house and he loves the new owners. So just over the moon, completely ecstatic about it, really. It makes it all worthwhile and, and it gives me a real, you know, reason for doing this job. So just great. Not one to give up, Jason made a number of return visits to see Tyson. It was eventually agreed that he was suffering and he was removed. Enjoying yourself? Ugh. Because we followed it up time and time and time again, we've managed to remove the dog from the situation. He's now got a chance to, uh, to have a new life. He's now called Teddy and has traded his dirty patio for the long grass of the RSPCA Autumn Animal Centre, where he'll stay until he's able to be rehomed. Bella was at death's door last time we saw her. She's about as thin as she could be without getting to the point of collapse. But now she's a happy, healthy hound, and Kate is over the moon. Oh, it's lovely to see her again. She's looking fabulous. It's taken her a long time to put on the weight, but she's done it slowly and gradually. She's now looking really healthy, which is just great to see, and she's just so happy as well. Her previous owner is being investigated, and Bella will stay at the local animal centre until the case is resolved. <laughs>